a prehistoric solar observatory in the middle of Sahara Desert by Amelia Carolina Sparavigna, Department of Applied Science and Technology. Abstract. The prehistoric stone funerary monuments of the Sahara Desert distributed in a huge geographical area had been created in several different shapes. Some of them have a design that looks like a keyhole and therefore are known as keyhole tombs. Since they are facing the sunrise, these tombs were also considered as places for the worship of the sun. In this paper, we show that one of them, in Algeria, has two radial lines oriented with the sunrise azimuths of winter and summer solstices. This monument is then a prehistoric solar observatory in the middle of Sahara. Introduction All around the world, the prehistoric cultures have created monuments, the existence of which has led to several speculations about their origins and purposes. Some symbolic elements added by ancient people in the planning of these structures can help us in understanding their purposes. Several alignments made of stones, for instance, are oriented to the sunrise, and then we can guess that these stone structures were used for the worship of the sun, such as some stone circles, the most famous of which being Stonehenge, the prehistoric monument of England. Some stone alignments and circles of the Syrian desert seem to have a solar orientation too. In references 1 and 2, we have used Google Earth for a survey of the prehistoric sites of the Syrian desert. In fact, where vegetation is lacking such as in deserts or in areas where forest canopy had been removed, the remote sensing is quite suitable to investigate ancient structures and their planning. When the satellite images are showing alignments, straight lines or lines radiating from a center, we can use software such as that provided by Salumis.com to compare them to the directions of sunrise and sunset. Salumis.com is giving the direction and high of the sun throughout any day of the year working on a Google map. These u the use of these two GIS, Geographic Information Systems, Google Earth and Salumis.com was applied in one to investigate the stone circles of the Syrian desert. Of course, it can be applied to any sort of monument. In this paper, we will use them again to study a prehistoric monument located in the middle of Sahara Desert, in the province of Elisi, the southeastern corner of Algeria. This is one of the countless prehistoric stone funerary monuments of Sahara. The prehistoric Saharan monuments can have several different shapes. Several are showing a design that looks like a keyhole, figure 1, and therefore are known as keyhole tombs. Monuments in Trau de Serrure in French. These structures consist of mounds surrounded by a circular stone structure, having inside another stone circle and a pathway crossing them. The keyhole tombs had also been proposed as places for the worship of the sun, 3 and 4, due to the alignment of their pathway towards the sunrise. Here, using the solumis.com software, we show that one of these keyhole structures has its stone lines aligned along the azimuths of sunrise on the solstices. For this reason, this monument could be considered a prehistoric solar observatory too. Using Google Earth and Solumis.com It is evident that satellites improved the aerial archaeology. The archaeology which is studying the ancient remains by surveying them from some altitude. A high viewpoint permits a better appreciation of large sites. In this manner, they can be viewed in their entirety and within their landscape. 
early investigations of aerial archaeology were made using hot air balloons after airplanes were used with the support of aerial photography. Today we have satellite images, often with the required high resolution freely available in GIS software such as Google Earth. These systems allow making a remote survey of regions the total coverages of which by photographic images were impossible or permit the study of areas which are unreachable for several reasons. In the case of Sahara, we have huge parts of it that can be the subject of a satellite archaeological investigation because among the collected images of Google Earth, for instance, there are large bands with high resolution, 5 and 6. An example of such work is shown in Figure 2. The image gives the result of a preliminary survey we made of the province of Elisi, Algeria, with pens indicating the positions of keyhole tombs. A detail of this area is shown in Figure 3. In fact, with Google Earth, it is possible to mark the places concerning the specific research we are making. Then the list of the place marks can be used to create a KML file. Figure 2. The region of Algeria where we find the prehistoric keyhole monuments. The place marks, more than a hundred, are indicating their positions. Note the bands having a high resolution. Figure 3. A detail of the region south of Djijinet, Algeria. In the figure 2, we can see the place marks of about a hundred of keyhole tombs. However, the number of these monuments is quite larger. As told in 6, some researchers using Google Earth were able to increase the collection of the 158 monuments recorded in 1966 to around 435 in 2007 and then to more than 600 in 2009. Therefore, although the bands of high resolution are often irregularly arranged, these remote explorations can greatly enrich the archaeological databases of Sahara, allowing a statistical approach to the distribution of ancient monuments. If we find an interesting site in the Google Earth images and its planning is showing some peculiar alignment, it is possible the site has a solar alignment. We can verify it at salumis.com, a site which is giving a model of the sunlight direction on any day of the year at any location of the world. A polar diagram overlaying a satellite map shows the direction and height altitude of the sun throughout the day. Thicker and shorter lines mean the sun is higher in the sky. Longer and thinner lines mean the sun is closer to the horizon. Salumis.com software had been used for several monuments, C7 for instance, and references therein. Keyhole Monuments Several pre-Islamic funerary and religious monuments are visible in the Google Earth satellite images of North Africa. The time span of these monuments is extremely wide, from Neolithic up to Arabic invasion. However, as remarked in 4, we find enduring patterns in the orientations of these monuments, most likely related to the ritual and symbolic importance of the rising sun. These patterns are confirming the solar aspect of the North African religion indicated by some ancient writers. Figure 4. Keyhole Tombs near Dijanet, Algeria. Today, Touareg call the prehistoric funerary monuments of the Sahara, which can have different forms with the general term of Adinan. The earliest type of Adebni is the keyhole monument. Radiocarbon dates those in Niger from 3600 to 220 BCE 
as already observed by the early European visitors. A large number of Idenan had their main distinctive elements facing the sun. Actually, in 1966, archaeologists obtained that the orientations of 158 keyhole monuments in Fad Noun, Algeria, lie in the azimuth range of the sunrise. A similar result was obtained for the corridors of some keyhole monuments at Emu Lulu, Niger. Another relevant type of dry store prehistoric burial place is the so-called V-shaped monument, which is a tumulus having two lines or arms of stones. The antennae, that are some tens of meters long, the earliest examples of this kind of stone structure are dated about 3200 to 2900 BCE. Again, the analysis of the V-shape Idenon in Tassili is showing that their antennae are towards the rising sun. Several of these monuments are located in the middle of the wonderful landscape of Tassili. An Italian writer and explorer who loved and visited several times this part of Sahara, Sino Bakazi, 1916-2009, to defined them the stone flying swallows of Amgwid. Other types of Saharan stone burials are the crescent mounds, the crater tumuli, and the mounds within alignment, which are ranging from 1900 BC to the beginning of the local Islamic culture. Inside them, the bodies have head or face oriented eastward. In the figure 5, we can see different types of monuments in the same landscape. Other kinds of monuments exist as reported in 4. Figure 5, a landscape with keyhole, crater, and crescent mounds, courtesy Google Earth. A solar observatory. If we observe the keyhole tombs with Google Earth, we see that they have a long pathway generally aligned toward the rising sun. As previously told, this caused these structures to be considered places for a solar worship too. Let us concentrate on a specific monument which could be an example of a peculiar kind of keyhole monument. It is located in the most populated left band of figure 2. We can see it in the figure 6. Note the two lines radiating from the center of the inner circle. This is a structure resembling some of the Syrian desert on which we can apply the solumus.com software. Using it, we can see the directions of sunrise on the winter and summer solstices. Figure 7. We find that the two lines radiating from the center of the inner circle have the directions of these sunrises. Of course, it is necessary to observe that the actual direction of sunrise could be slightly different for a possible inclination of the ground. In any case, this monument is peculiar because it is precisely oriented eastwards. If we imagine the ancient local population using this monument to view the motion of the sun during the year, this site can be considered a solar observatory too a sort of Stonehenge in the middle of Sahara. Figure 6, a keyhole monument, province of the Elysi province, Algeria. Note the two lines radiating from the center of the inner circle. Figure 7, using solumus.com, we can see the sunrise azimuths on solstices. Note that the two lines radiating from the center of the inner circle correspond to the directions of these azimuths. 